It's time to put the international in the International Motorsports Association. Today, the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge season reaches the halfway point north of the border in Canada. Our stage is the legendary Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in Ontario, home of more than a half century of racing memories. In the Bellowing Grand Sport Class, Ford has brought the new GT350 RC to the table, but rival Chevy is riding a three-race win streak, courtesy of the Stevenson Camaro of Andrew Davis and Robin Liddell. Meanwhile, in the high-revving street tuner division, no one has won more than once, and two points cover the top five drivers in the standings. Buckle in and hold on. It's the CTSC from CTMP on FS1. The home of Canadian road racing since 1961, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park is the site of round five of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge for 2015. Hi everybody, I'm Bob Varsha along with Calvin Fish and Justin Bell. Our only stop north of the border on the 2015 calendar and it should be a great race. Justin, this track has seen so many improvements over the years, mainly cosmetic or in the name of the spectators, but as far as the racing circuit you're looking at goes, the old girl still has her claws. Yeah, they have never been able to new to this track. And for good reason, decades of some of the best sports car racing in the world have happened here. To win, you need this real mix of youthful fearlessness and mature experience. But maybe the most important quality that you need to master this track is bravery. And Calvin, more than one team and driver lineup, believe those are the qualities they have, which means we're going to look forward to some amazing racing. Well, Justin, we've only got four rounds in the book this year, but what a role GM and the Stevenson Motorsport team have been on. Since finishing runner-up at the season opener in Daytona, they've gone unbeaten since that time, shooting for their fourth consecutive victory here today. They really seem to have a firm grip on the championship right now, so the question is, who can knock them off their perch? Well, the new Ford Shelby GT350 RC debuted at the Glen with impressive speed. It started from the pole there, and that form continues here this weekend. For more on the GS qualifying story, let's go down to the first of our pit reporters. That's Brian Till. Well, thanks, Calvin. Don't give the championship to Camaro yet. There's still six races to go, including one today. But you're right, the Multimatic Mustangs very quick. They've locked out the front row here this weekend. Multimatic from just down the road. That means this is their home track. They know it very, very well. And there's no place they would rather get that first victory for the Ford Shelby GT350 RC than right here at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. But a lot of competition to get by. The number 13 Rumbum Porsche, second in the championship, sits on row number two. The number 14 Doran Racing Nissan, also very quick. And don't forget about the 46 BMW Fall Line entry. They want to get back to victory lane. So a lot of competition. It's never been any tougher in Grand Sport. For ST, here's Jamie Howe. Thank you, Brian. Freedom Autosport started the season off with two 10th place finishes for Andrew Carbonell and Liam Dwyer. However, after a win and a top five, they now find themselves leading the ST point standings. And they do start 19 today, so they have an uphill battle. However, they have a sister car this weekend as the Moto prototype drivers Jonathan Bomarito and Tristan Nunes have hopped in the number 25 MX-5. And continuing on with that Mazda trend, Devin Jones has taken over the number 34 from Alara Racing to co-drive with Christian Shimshak. Devin claimed the class pole position in only his second series race. Mazda's never won here at CTMP, but they have the field stacked to make it a real possibility today. Bob? All right, thanks very much, Jamie. Justin, we've talked about the racetrack. Let's take a closer analysis. What a track it is. It's almost four Canadian kilometers, two and a half American miles, and turn one, turn two is where you really have to suck it up and get yourself together very fast. Great overtaking action as you come down the back straight. The Mario Andretti straight leads into turn eight, the corner onto the main straight. And I tell you what, that's where we're gonna see some incredible overtaking action this afternoon. You see the cars making their way up the Andretti straight as our Continental starting grid flashes across the top of your screen. We have four onboard cameras. Andrew Davis starts the Stevenson Camaro, leading the points coming in, but only fourth on the grid. Scott Maxwell has the pole sitting Mustang GT350 RC. Brad Yeager starts fifth in class in the number 14 Nissan 370Z. And former Marine Staff Sergeant Liam Dwyer will have the Freedom Autosport Mazda MX-5 starting 19th in class. Here's a look at the weather conditions. A beautiful day for racing. And here come the Mustangs and the colors of the Comstop racing team from days of old. And the Canadian racing colors of white with green, green, green stripes. Green, green we have a green flag. 
Well, the multi-matic boys go straight to the front, as you would expect. A nice jump there by Billy Johnson, who grabbed the pole here yesterday in scintillating form. Rum Bum Car tucks into the third spot, Justin. Camaro stacked up behind him. They're building up speed, obviously, trying to get heat in those tyres, and you don't want to get too close up behind the guy in front through turn two. Very clean racing right now as they're heading up into turn three. Thanks for the correction, Calvin. It is Billy Johnson on pole. The GS field is on its way. Here comes the ST class. Stacking everyone up here nicely. What a story Devin Jones was. Hopping into that car that's been just about nowhere but pole thus far this season. And away they go. I think Gilsinger may have given him a little nudge there yeah. in the third starting uh, Honda Civic there, the number 93 car, but got away with it. Yeah, it was almost three wide yeah. coming up to the start. This is the kind of racing you expect here. Remember, these cars are so close in performance. This opening lap is very important. Can you take advantage? Can you get another place? Because it not qualifying might not have gone your way, but the first lap could. That is a very steep hill leading into that fast left-hand corner. The first couple of corners get right to the point of this racetrack. Fast, with a lot of energy going through the tires as you go through these quick corners. There's really nothing like it in all of North America. The turn one, turn two areas you've explained, Justin, just phenomenal corners and really take total commitment. And right now, these Continental tires aren't completely up to pressure or tire temp right now, so the boys have to tread a little bit carefully here on this opening lap. See that dark patch of asphalt there in turn 5B. That's Moss Corner, 5A and 5B. The track management had to do some repaving overnight to cure a little tear up just off the apex in the 5B corner. Looks like the little giant, little, little, uh, little guy against the giant there, the size of that Mazda with yeah. the BMW going around the outside Potenzo as they go up and the lead. Great, fantastic. Yeah, just using the power there of the uh, BMW. Certainly the Mazda has great handling ability. And uh, as Jamie mentioned, uh, they seem to have stacked the field here, but it's all about the raceability. You see Gilsinger there in the third, co third car in line in the ST class right now. They've shown a lot of pace here this weekend as well, looking for a, a win. Through the S's and on to the pit straightaway. And this is the road just falls right away there, right as you're turning in, Justin. The car can get a little light on you as well. So you've got to really have smooth and slow hands there at the initial turn-in point. Yeah, I've been standing on the bank watching a lot of, of the practices, and it's so committed, it's so fast, that you're on the edge. One touch, one little uh, uh, getting the wrong line, hitting the inside curb, it can all go wrong. Brian? You guys are talking about tires. Well, one of the things you need to keep in mind is that today is one of the warmest days that the guys have seen on track. And tire temperature, tire wear is going to be absolutely critical. You want to make sure you get those pressures set in the beginning because you know they're going to grow and you know the temperatures are going to come. You've got to take care of these tires, especially on the Grand Sports cars. They're a little heavier. They load the tire a little bit more with their performance. you got to take care of them to make sure you can make it through a stint. Well, we talked about the pace of those new Shelby GT350 RCs, but Certainly no one told that message to Hugh Plum. He's hanging on here and putting the pressure on Jay Buford, who sits in that second position right now. He's got the, remember, perhaps the experience in that car of knowing how to manage and how to push earlier on in the race than perhaps the guys in front of This is a new chassis in front, so they're learning all the way. Every time they do a race distance, that will be part of their data learning. I'd say Hugh doesn't have that uh, learning curve. Matt Bell and number six, Stevenson Camaro, challenging Brad Yeager. And I spoke to a lot of teams this morning and uh, they said, you know, you really don't get the chance of doing those longer runs here over the course of the weekend. There's always incidents and red flags and scenarios. So you don't get that long extended run like you're now going to get into in the opening stint of this race. So it's going to be a big fact here. Spoke to Joe Vardy, who's the engineer on the Rum Bum machine that sits in the third spot, the yellow car just ahead of the championship leader right now. And he said, Around lap five, lap six, that will really be a true indicator of what sort of pace these Mustangs have. If they don't fall off like we anticipate everyone doing, that means they do have an advantage right now. And that's why they're managing the tyres so so well. I mean, it's one thing to be up there, chuffed, but not so easy to go by. So I think Hugh, Hugh knows that as well. It's too early on in this race, too important in terms of points to, to, to make a drastic move. But keep the pressure on, because if you keep the pressure on, they're going to have to run faster and maybe uh, deteriorate their tyres. Brad Jager made the pass, excuse me, Matt Bell made the pass on Brad Jager, who has fallen back another position. Ashley Freyberg in the first of the BMWs now moves up into sixth, dropping Jager to seventh. 
Yeah, Ashley having another good run here. Got their first podium of the year at Watkins Glen. She and defending series champ Trent Hidman having another strong run here. Certainly the BMW seems to have fallen back a little bit. I think the ante has been upped in this class, certainly with the Camaro over the last 18 months. And then we're seeing this new Shelby GT350 RC as well. Seems like it's left the BMW lagging a little bit in outright performance. But as Brian correctly said at the beginning of the, uh, the show, this is the midpoint almost of this, this season. And, you know, the way BOP works, the way everything works, no one can be written out. And, uh, you know, you only need one or two bad results to, to perhaps be able to have a chance at challenging at the next race. Or and certainly, conversely, yeah, <laughs> BOP get, meaning bounce yeah. of performance, of course, that little adjustment they got at Watkins Glen, that was enough to suddenly get them on the podium. So it doesn't take much. Everyone's very close, and the series does a great job of trying to analyze all of the uh, data that they receive and try and make a level playing field for all of the different marks represented here in the class. It's a good little battle right here. Between teammates, yeah. the number eight, Mantella Motorsport Camaro, followed by the number 80. Yeah, this is a great uh, battle here, as you said, between the Mantella Autosport guys, and Anthony Mantella has got around Martin Barkey here. He had an incident earlier in the weekend in turn three. They had to work hard to get the car ready for qualifying, and uh, he's now up to the seventh spot and holding a good point in the championship as well right now. Big weekend for those folks. They're sponsored by Gulf Oil of Canada. You recognize those iconic baby blue and orange colors. But as you pointed out, Calvin, it's been a difficult weekend to this point. Yeah, and he simply just missed the brake pedal a little bit. And on the entry to turn three, there's no room for Aaron, as you can see. Hits the tire bundle, car goes up on his side, and he waves to the home crowd. So it wasn't a big deal. They just had to really work on that front clip, and the car was in decent shape for qualifying a little bit later in the day. But I think that just exaggerates uh, exactly what um, is an example of exactly what we've been talking about a week. You are going so fast mm. here. How many times do we see cars go on their side and go over other tracks? Not often. And we've seen it already this weekend two or three times in different practices and qualifying. So, you know, the, the stakes are high here. This is, this is a man's, and for Ashley, a woman's racing yeah. track. And uh, kudos to everyone out there for the pace that they're running. If you look just above the rear wheel, you'll see a logo, Ollie Strong, representing Ollie Strong Foundation. We'll talk more about that when we return to round five of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge from Canada. Stay with us. It's the type of track I like. I love the fast sweeping corners and the elevation change here is so drastic that it's a real, it's a thrill ride. The track is fast. It's, um, it's scary if you look at some of the stationary objects on the side of it, but that's uh, the key to driving quickly is not look at those things. It is uh, definitely a unique track, a very high speed, a uh, lot of walls, and there's not too many tracks like this uh, left in the world. Two corners here, turns two and four that are blind downhill and very, very fast. And you have to have the confidence in yourself and in the car that the car is going to work, that you can really drive the car down in there. It's all third, fourth gear corners, a lot of flow, a lot like Watkins Glen, but with more elevation change. So it, it's a, a, tra a track you have to be very confident and attack on, but it can bite you very easily. Car Challenge from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. I'm Bob Varsha with Calvin Fish and Justin Bell. Brian Till and Jamie Howe down in the pit lane. Billy Johnson remains the race leader in that beautiful green and white Mustang GT350 RC, chased by his Multimatic teammate Jay Buford. They've been 1-2 since the start of the race, and Hugh Plum in that beautiful yellow and blue Porsche. <coughs> oh. It's the type of track I like. I love the fast sweeping corners and the elevation change here is so drastic that it's a real, it's a thrill ride. The track is fast. It's, um, it's scary if you look at some of the stationary objects on the side of it, but that's uh, the key to driving quickly is not look at those things. It is uh, definitely a unique track, a very high speed, a uh, lot of walls, and there's not too many tracks like this uh, left in the world. Two corners here, turns two and four that are blind downhill and very, very fast. 
and you have to have the confidence in yourself and in the car that the car is going to work, that you can really drive the car down in there. It's all third, fourth gear corners, a lot of flow, a lot like Watkins Glen, but with more elevation change. So it, it's a, a, tra a track you have to be very confident and attack on, but it can bite you very easily. Ask any driver about Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, and they're likely to use those words. Fast, challenging, total commitment. Welcome back to round five of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge for 2015 with Calvin Fish and Justin Bell. I'm Bob Varsha, Jamie Howe and Brian Till down in the pit lane. Billy Johnson still leads from pole, being chased by his Multimatic teammate, Jay Buford. Let's get you caught up. Start of the race. Johnson leads Buford and Hugh Plum in the rum bum Porsche as the GS class began to sort itself out. ST start, well, it's a little wild there at the start. I believe Chad Gilsinger got into the pole sitter before we even saw the green flag wave. Everyone funnels down through these very fast corners very effectively and uh, no big problems. Now Gilsinger continued to drive hard. This is the battle for second in ST coming off the final corner. Three wide with that GS Porsche on the inside. Gilsinger has got to the front of the pack here, but Devin Jones, our pole sitter, is now starting to put the pressure on. Atanto has dropped back to the fourth position who had the early lead in the BMW. Now, while we were in break, we saw contact at the top of the hill leading down to turn two as Dan Rogers and Liam Dwyer got together. You're on board with Dwyer. And it is a blind entry to this corner. And of course, right as you see, he goes down the inside and boom, spins him round. No harm, no foul, but it did do damage to the back of the car. And the 26 got a drive-through penalty for that contact to Brian Till. 26 did a drive-through, but for Dan Rogers in the 38, he sits on pit lane. The car up on jack stands working on the left rear suspension. It looks like perhaps a tow link is what they're trying to replace. The car was sitting down a little bit on the left rear when it came in. I'm not sure that that fix is going to take care of the problem. Just bad luck for this team all year long. Seventh at Sebring, but the other three finishes have all been out of the top 20. Bad luck continues, Jamie. Well, it's also bad luck for the number 14 from Doran racing with Brad Jager behind the wheel. We saw him get up to the fourth position, but now he's all the way back towards the back of the pack. And I talked to Kevin Doran. He said they're actually running on five cylinders for most of their way around the racetrack. It does go back and forth between five and six. They think that it's an ignition coil. Those have been an issue in the past. If they get a long yellow, they could potentially try to make a change, but it's going to be a long day for that team. That's a shame because talking to some of their competitors here in the paddock this morning, a lot of people said that Nissan is about to win. It's got tremendous straight line speed. It's a lighter car than some of the other cars in the field, so that means it's not working the tires quite so hard. So the longer green flag runs, that Nissan typically comes into its own here. And you're going to see, you're right, people have been talking about it, and I think fans of the series are going to uh, have been following this car. And of course, Nissan Worldwide Racing is, is high profile right now. Uh, and it would be great to see that car in front. It just looks right, doesn't it? It's got literally a wheel at each corner. It looks well balanced. We've been watching it out on track and uh, unfortunately they got this engine problem right now, but the way it's carving through traffic right now, I'd say it's on six. You know, on each corner good. always helps too. Right. Well, would you have to pick up on my, <laughs> you know what I meant. The Delta one doesn't. Now that 14 is just one of two cars from Kevin Doran's stable. The other is running in ninth place, one spot ahead of Brad Jager in the hands of Nick McMillan, the winner of Nissan's Driver Development Academy that takes online gamers and those that appear to have race driver skills are invited to try out for a real driving seat. And as you pointed out, Justin, Nissan is a big name in worldwide racing right now, so the sky's the limit if you graduate from that program with honors. I think they're going to actually change the driver lineup for uh, some of the remaining rounds with their latest champion taking over the one of the seats there. So it's a great program. They really believe in it and it's had great success. A lot of those gamers are coming into the higher echelons of motorsport very quickly and getting results. Funnily enough, I oh, have a oh, look at that. The yeah. Freiburg car? Yeah. Not a nice place either. No. That is a fully committed uh, exit there of turn two. Now, you're seeing a lot of asphalt out on the edge of the tracks. What you see on the left there, right now, that that is the way most sport used to be. But right now, in the, some of the that was the whole way around like that. But now, in some of the fastest corners, you have a lot of runoff. Mixed reaction from the drivers, Calvin. Some used to like it the way it was because it defined the edge. 
but now, of course, it allows a bit of a, a rider one out. Yeah, the one thing I'd say is it's great. I mean, safety is obviously paramount in our sport. I think what they need to do is kind of put a painted border, like down through yeah. turn two. It's still an awesome corner. It drives the same, but visually, when we look at it right there, there's such an expansive black top. It doesn't really, you don't see the flow of the corner anymore. Yeah. So I was talking to Ronnie Fellow, who's obviously a big player here at CTMP, and said, maybe we should try and put some borders on so you can sign it, kind of see the shape yeah. of the corner better. Well, race control agrees. They're going to have to go out and get that car, so we're under our first full course caution. Before our previous commercial break, I mentioned the number eight and the word Ollie Strong above the rear wheel arches. Oliver Ferguson, five-year-old son of a gentleman named Rob Ferguson, a friend of Mantella Motorsports team owner Anthony Mantella, was diagnosed with aplastic anemia, a rare cancer. So the family formed the Ollie Strong Foundation. And they're running this weekend with the name of the foundation on the car to raise awareness and funds after young Ollie's diagnosis. He will wave the green flag for the big Tudor race going on this weekend at CTMP as well. Another break and we'll be back under caution here in Canada. Let's get you back up to speed here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park under our first full core caution of the day. Pole sitting Mustang GT 350RC of Billy Johnson made a stop. The team splitting strategies. Also into the pits was the Rum Bum Porsche. Only 30 minutes in here, so you can't jump out in terms of doing a driver change because there's a minimum of 45 minutes that one of the drivers has to do. And we see the Rumbum machine, nice clean start there, just beating the Stevenson boys onto the track. Then problems here for the 14, that misfire, they're still trying to diagnose and get it sorted out. We also had a visit to the pits by the 34 ST class car, apparently also an engine misfire under the hood of the Mazda MX-5. As we prepare to go green once again, the Chevrolet safety car pulls off and Jade Buford will take his turn at the front in the sister, Shelby. Green, green. There's three home teams at the front. <laughs> You've got uh, Multimatic and then the two Mantella Autosport cars running 2-3. These guys obviously not taking the opportunity to make a pit stop here, just rolling the dice on strategy a bit. But look at this, Billy Johnson, our pole sitter, already looking for way by Anthony Mantella there as they dive into turn two. Interesting to see who's good off the restart with new tires on. Remember, they all have new tires on right now. And uh, it'll be right now you're, you're watching Buford very quick around the outside there. Got that's that's a brave move there. That, that he, he made that stick all the way around the outside of Mantella. And you said, uh, I mean, Johnson just took left side tires here on the number 15, but uh, you still, you don't quite have the tire temperatures yet under that pace lap. You can't really generate the load needed to get up to full temp. So nice brave move there by Billy Johnson. So he's full of fuel. Two cars in front of him haven't topped up yet today. So he should have a good advantage here strategy wise. Hugh Plum is looking mighty racy there too as he came through there. He's, he knows he has to keep the pressure on, keep hassling them. I've always liked the balance of this car. I think it, it's, uh, it, it looks right. It, it's, uh, it's very sporty and it's probably very quick right now. As you said, he only put left hand, uh, left side tires on. As you watch the car circulate this two and a half mile 10 turn track, look behind the fences on either side. This is basically, whoops. Oh, that was our leader in ST yep. suddenly grinding to a halt. Chad Gilsinger going to be sharing the car this weekend, hopefully with Ryan Eversley, who's making his return to uh, competition here. He's a member of the HPD family, and they've drafted him in. We had Kuna Whitmer behind the wheel for a few rounds here for the Hart boys, but this is not what they wanted to see. He had a very strong car here today. And that is dead in the water. Then it's gone full course yellow because whatever it was, they absolutely stopped him dead there on the fast uphill sweeper. This is going to be our shorter caution procedure because we're within 15 minutes of a preceding one. So here you see just everyone. He's already. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. he's got no power, no drive there, and everyone's just trying to miss him at this stage. Have you ever been on the highway and thought, if I'm in the fast lane and thought, if I break down right now, how am I going to get over to the hard shoulder? Well, that's the way he felt right there. Yeah. It, everyone did a great job of almost missing him. I think a few people touched on the way up. No apparent fluids. She just stopped. So our second full course caution, as Calvin meant, mentioned, it'll be a short one. So stand by, we'll be back in a moment to the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge from Canada. 
Back at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, let's get you up to speed. Under our first full course caution of the day, the pole sitting car of Billy Johnson brought the pole sitting Mustang GT 350RC to the Multimatic pits. Two tire change only for the number 15 run bum. A brilliant pit stop here. All four tires were changed at the same time the Stevenson group were in the pit lane as well. Yeah, it was a standard stop for them. All four tires on the six and the nine, but the track already claiming its first victims. The number 14 Nissan is having engine management issues. And they weren't alone. Number 34, ST, class pole sitting Mazda MX-5, also with an apparent misfire. And then an odd situation here is Jed Gilsinger. Yeah, listening to their radio communication, Chad seemed to communicate to the team that he'd run into someone that had shut the engine off, and then you saw the ensuing chaos. And here's Dan Rogers involved in an incident earlier with Liam Dwyer. He pulls to a stop. So there were actually two full course cautions in that segment. But now it appears that we are ready to go racing flag, once again. Jade Buford leading Billy Johnson. Remember, Billy Johnson has made his first pit, pit stop of the day. Jade Buford has not, as well as Martin Barkey and uh, some others there in that lead pack right now. On board with Andrew Davis and the Stevenson Camaro. Yeah, you're going to find the, the, the Camaros are going to have to push very hard in these. Oh, well, the traffic's bunched up. I don't think they can actually right now hold the pace at the front, but they're going to try and get track position every time they can, just to remind everyone they are very much a part of this race. Car handles so well as they go through turn three. Hugh Plum there is obviously trying to do his own moves uh, on the car in front, but Martin Bucky holding him off very easily as they come up through, winding their way up to turn five. Yeah, Barky obviously on used tyres right now, 27 laps, we're into this race, so uh, certainly the boys behind him have a little fresher rubber to work with, with those fresh Continentals on board. But meanwhile, the two multi-matic Shelby GT350 RCs look very strong at the front right now, and uh, Billy Johnson really in great shape here. Remember, he's topped up with fuel, Buford is not. I guess it was the cycling of the pit stops, but Hugh Plum is he's going around the outside as we head up the back straight the andretti straight there into the very fast over the top brow through the fast right hand a very hard braking flick it left as you make your way important to get a fast exit onto the pit straight here calvin but this is what plum needed he needed to be able to get up the back of the two mustang strategy here we're now past that 45 minimum drive time mark so barky's now in pit lane mantella playing a bit of a strategy call here going to get him out of the car, Carl Marcelli will take over the driving chores of that number 80. But certainly that Porsche had great straight line speed there. You can see the big advantage over the Camaro up the end ready straight away. Leader in ST, Andre Hartanto in the number 81 car. He led the class in the early portion of the race and then was shuffled back a few spots, now coming forward once again. That BMW seems to come alive earlier in the run and he faded a little bit as we saw that initial green flag run going on. But in second spot, I saw a winner from the previous round at Watkins Glen, Chad McCombie scored his first victory there and looking strong here once, once again. Watch the left side of your screen. Oh, there's a different line. I That's reckon something. Jonathan Bomarito got a little squeezed out there, probably by the many, if, if we could actually see that occurring a, a, a bit earlier. And uh, Bomarito, when I was talking to him before the race, you know, this was a last minute call up for them to come and do this, and it was obviously a lot of fun. Andrew Carbonell gets into the number 26. Liam Dwyer gets out. Jamie's there. And it's been a pretty good pit stop so far for this number 26 team. Uh, fueling is already completed. Driver change is done. They're now getting to work on these right side tires. Pit lane got really busy though. Three of the four, three of the teams that came in were all right nose to tail with each other. So the number 78 Mustang actually just left the lane and hit a set of tires. So we're going to have to see if any penalties come from any of this, but 26 is now out. Yeah, and they managed to keep, despite that penalty, for that stop and go penalty for the contact for Liam Dwyer, they kept that car on the lead lap. The question is now, with an hour 38 on the board, they're going to need another yellow, I think, to not need a splash of fuel to get to the checkered flag today. And all that activity in the pit lane that Jamie described was for the reason you mentioned, Calvin. We were past the 45-minute drive time mark. And that works two ways. There used to be a 45-minute mark that some teams would take advantage of, like last year, Rumbum, for example, would bring Nick Longy in before he got to that mark, really focused on the championship for Matt Plum. There's now a reverse side of that. There's a maximum drive time of an hour and 45, so you really can't play too many games with that any longer if you want to score points here today. Jonathan Barmarito, we saw off and on. His teammate is in the pits with Jamie. 
Jobs, right? Tristan Nunes, we talked about the fact that this deal came together late, but it was actually 45 minutes before the second practice session of the weekend. What made you guys get behind the wheel of this MX-5? I mean, it actually started as a joke on the way uh, to the track that morning. We were in the car with all the drivers, uh, myself, Joel, Tom Long, and Jonathan Bomarito, and we were just joking about it at first, like, oh, you guys got a spare car, why don't we get in it? So um, we pitched the idea to John, and he, he lit up with happiness. So it all came together pretty fast, but it's, you know, it's great to be in this car. Now, we talk a lot about the differences in, in the GS and ST class, but you guys actually are bringing prototype experience. <laughs> what, what's the biggest challenge for you in this car? Well, yeah, it, I mean, given we tested here on Tuesday with, uh, with a new gas motor, it's, it was a, a, a pretty uh, large learning gap. You know, considering you don't have any downforce in these things, and it's a you know it's more of a momentum car, so it took a little bit to get used to. But um, I'm, I'm probably still gonna have to get used to it during the race because I'm lacking a little bit of practice time. But it's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, it's cool to see you guys out here, Brian. Well, the number 81, Andre Hart, Tonto behind the wheel right now. He shares that car with Tyler Cook. Tyler, the car's been up at the front. It's been fast all weekend long. What is it about Canadian Tire Motorsport Park that the BMW likes? Um, the F30 proved last year how good it really was. Uh, the car just handled really good through the fast sections. Um, it's tough to compare to the MX-5. The MX-5 is really hooked up through there, but overall we have a really consistent car thanks to the team and thanks to Continental Tires for uh, giving us great tires to run on. I know handling is important, but one of the things that you guys have talked about is gear ratios and that turbocharger. Getting caught in traffic, does it bog it down a little bit? Being a, more of a momentum car, do you have to work your way through in the right places? Um, yeah, when we get in traffic, it definitely plays into a factor, um, but you kind of have to adjust it, adjust to it like any race car driver, but um, you just got to work with what you have, and uh, overall, I think we have a pretty good car. They need a little bit of good luck. They've been fast all year, but they need some good finishes, guys. I should say, you heard Tristan Nunez say, well, you know, I'm going to have to take some time to get used to it. He has made one previous start in this series at Lime Rock Park in 2013 He's in a Mazda good. MX-5, and he won. He's a Meanwhile, quick study. For yeah, I'd say. Jonathan Bomarito, on the other hand, made his most recent start in 2012. His four previous starts in the series were 11 years earlier in 2001, and he too has a victory. So those guys are going to be a factor. Let Billy go if he's faster. Let Billy go if he's faster. Word from the pits to Jay Buford, let Billy go if he's faster, and it appears he was. Well, he's on fresher rubber, he's got heavier cars, he's got more fuel on board, but uh, certainly both cars are looking really strong. Yeah, it's also one of those uh, situations that if you are slightly faster and you've got Hugh Plum getting so sporty right behind, then you know it's one thing to catch up, another to go by, so uh, that was a good strategy call. And of course, as you said, tires, fuel, many reasons, definitely not the drivers. Yeah, I'm sure Jade's a little bit frustrated because uh, obviously Multimatic split their strategy, which is not a bad play, but I think 30 minutes in, these cars go about 60 minutes on a green flag run. So all of these cars out there right now have made that first stop, can do it on just one more stop the rest of the way. Jade Buford is gonna maybe be looking for a splash unless we see some more yellow. On board with Billy Johnson. Meanwhile, with more on the Bomberito Mazda Nunez story. Once again, here's Jamie. Well, you did hear Tristan say that he's going to probably still need to get used to the car when he's behind the wheel of it during this race. I talked to Jonathan before the race, and he said, you know, I didn't know that most sport could be any more intimidating, but it actually is more intimidating behind the wheel of an ST car than it is behind the wheel of that Mazda prototype because it doesn't have that same downforce, so the car slides around a lot more, but he says it is a ton of fun to race in this series. We're seeing a replay there of that contact between Jonathan Bomarito and the number 37, John Cooper Works Mini. And we understand the 37 is going to get a drive-through penalty for that col uh, collision. Uh, I think I think there might have been another incident uh, that maybe that penalty is for. I didn't really see the 37 yeah. do too much wrong, and there looked like Jonathan just got a little bit loose. Yeah, and, and that's so committed that corner. You just get out a little of a couple of feet to the left or right. You're in a little bit of trouble. Through Moss Corner and on to the Andretti Strait. We'll take a break and return for beautiful Canadian weather at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Welcome back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. There you see the number 80 Mantella Motorsport car of Kyle Marcelli. 
from Barry, Ontario. We asked Kyle to step out of his skin and describe himself in our Continental Tire for What You Do feature. What do you suppose was the first thing he mentioned? Kyle is a, uh, a Canadian-born uh, racing driver. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Now, in high school, we could either whistle it or we could hum it. I was more of a whistler. As Canadians, I think we all come out of the womb on a pair of hockey skates. And uh, from a young age, we played hockey together. Um, when we're not playing hockey on the ice, we were playing road hockey. Not only is it a fun sport, but it's also a great workout. It's a great exercise. In a nutshell, that, that's Kyle Marcelli. Glad he can drive. He <laughs> sing old he's a no. fine driver, but as a singer, he's a great whistler. You know, I mean, this applies to most of my TV career, but there are many moments that you wish you'd never said. <laughs> and I think on the internet we may see that again, Kyle. Um, yeah. But he does drive very well. I remember him back in a Porsche shootout three years ago, and I was extremely impressed. And pretty much a guy that has had to do it the hard way without much support uh, financially. Uh, uh, there's no big family money there and things, so uh, he's here on his own merits. Good, good lad. And he's been mentored by Stefan Johansson, an uh, ex-Ferrari Formula One driver, yeah. so um, certainly he got Stefan's attention when he co-drove with him in some PC races a couple of years ago at Sebring and such. Yeah, should have been Shania Twain, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. Right up at the front end of this field, the Ford Mustangs are looking incredibly strong, but Hugh Plum, we've been watching him, he is literally terrorizing the rear end of Jay Buford's car there, lap after lap, but Billy Johnson, we saw him go by a little bit earlier, has been able to pull out a lead. We, we heard on the radio, he's a little faster, let him go, and it was obviously a cool strategy. Well, we talked about all the problems for the 14 car, the Nissan from Kevin Doran Racing. There is the sister machine. Nick McMillan has been in it since the green flag, and we have another full course caution, our third. Well, I think we're going to see the 158 hit pit lane when pit lane opens, for that matter, for the uh, GS cars. This should be a full safety caution procedure here because um, you alternate between the long procedure and the short. We're just coming off a short one, so uh, certainly the 158's got not got a lot of gas left in that tank right now. What do you guess that it was an engine problem that stopped the 41? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, but 125, Calvin, I heard you asking drivers at lunch. That's just right there, isn't it? I mean, if you fill up in the next three or four minutes. Yeah, for the ST cars, they can go sort of like, depending on the mark, between an hour 15 to an hour 30. For the GS cars, it's right around the hour mark. We are counting down one minute, or excuse me, one hour, 24 minutes and change remaining in this race. Lots of folks out manning the hillsides at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. We'll be back with more in a moment. Well, this is Mossport, and I'm Bruce McLaren. And as Bruce McLaren just told you, what was Mossport is now Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Welcome back. Let's get you up to speed. Under caution, both of the Multimatic Ford Mustang GT350 RCs came to the pit lane. Well, them the 13, topping up with fuel, overfilled it a little bit. You see the uh, fluid on pit lane. Pretty much everyone took the opportunity to pit. 15 car, obviously a slow stop there. I think it must have been the driver change being completed there for Scott Maxwell, and then it takes over the reins. More problems for the 34, Pulse City car in ST. Lots and lots of pit action and lots of driver changes as everybody works the clock, wonders whether there will be another full course caution between now green, and green, the end. Green flag. A little over one hour, 11 minutes remaining as we go back to green. Big move there by Kyle Marcelli. Gets around his teammate Mark Wilkins there on the drop of the green. So these guys rolling the dice on strategy, not making a pit stop and staying out. Track position, but also home track for Kyle. I mean, this is an important lap for him to lead. Pivotal in everyone's careers at this time of the season. You want to really show well as you go into the second half. And uh, very, very 
good restart there. These guys know how to race each other, don't they, Calvin? They know what they've got. They know the equity in the other driver and the trust level. And you need it when you drive around a track like this. On board with Scott Maxwell now in relief of Billy Johnson. Up ahead, young Austin Sindrick has taken over the 158. Yeah, and you can just see that the 158 leapfrogged around the 15 on our replays of the pit stops there. So obviously a delay on the 15. Scott Maxwell's got the experience just to stay calm, realizes that he has a really fast car underneath him, but he's got to work and pick his way to the front right now. I think you're right, Bob. I think the, the odds of not having another yellow are, are, are pretty small. Uh, it's not actually, the driving's actually been very high standard, but this track is so formidable. But look at the overtaking there. Look at this, Arsham back. And Sindrick goes side by side there up into the break zone for turn eight. Yeah, it's a long road to the front, isn't it, for both those Mustangs. That's uh, that's quite a the track position right now may prove to be a pretty uh, important issue. All of the top GS cars, nose to tail. You can hear the tire squealers. They're really getting every ounce of grip out of these Continental tires here as they go through that torturous turn one and turn two area. The loading here is tremendous. Very much the driving light, the first lap of a race right now. Very reactive. You see brake lights coming on early, brake lights through the middle of the corner. They're, they're really reacting to the car in front, but certainly Robin Liddell looking very aggressive, at perhaps trying to position, well, definitely trying to position himself to go up the inside of Hugh there, but with the track naturally going to the left into this very tight double right uh, before you head onto the long straight. I think he's only going to try and position himself, Calvin, for a, for a run up the straight. Yeah, Matt Plum just needs to be patient here. He will have been told that the three cars in front of you are going to be short on fuel by the end of this race unless we see a lot of caution. So he's in a great position there. They had a great pit stop, and he's head of the main championship contenders right now. But he wants to get a buffer, doesn't he? Yes, they got to come in at some point, but with Liddell and uh, Aschenbach and Sindrick and Maxwell right behind him, it would be nice for him to have the buffer of one car uh, between him and the cars that are actually in the same position, technically, as they go into the last third of this Ooh, race. Look at that Ooh. big move down to the inside by Sindrick there. That was awesome stuff on Lawson Aschenbach. Young man is coming of age in a hurry, I tell you what. You remember I said at the beginning, you've got to be youthful and experienced and, and, and brave. So you need two out of the three. Look at the twitch there by Lawson there as he goes through the apex of turn one. Maxwell looking to try and thread the needle there on the entry to two. It's not going to happen. Great stuff. Great visual here. Elevation changes. Unbelievable as you drop over the hill. Let's pick up the action in ST. Spencer Pompelli leading there in the number 17, looking very nice as he comes through that fast sweeping right hand, left hander there. Uh, we were just having lunch with him earlier, weren't we, Calvin? And he was, you know, he's, he's very calm, very confident. And as you said, he's had a pretty wide open weekend this weekend compared to his normal duties. Yeah, normally he's pulling double or triple duty. So he said, I'm just able to focus on this car this weekend, just uh, driving the one race. And he said, the car's been really good. He said, we've had a win this year, been really fast. Just had a little bit of bad luck. He said, we've got all of the tools in the box right now. And uh, we have a good chance here today. And it's certainly showing right now, leading the race. Compelli sharing the car with Luis Rodriguez Jr., who is very new to this. And yet those two came together to win a very strategically played race in the season opener at Daytona International Speedway. Yeah, that was a great win. Great win out of the box on debut for that team. And uh, Spence is one of the best in the business. I mean, he's one of the hired guns. You put him in, he's plug and play, and uh, he knows how to win. Well, let's hear from the man who started from pole and led much of the first half of this race with Brian. Billy Johnson watching Scott Maxwell try to move up from eighth. Billy, this new car, the Ford Shelby GT350 RC, what's the biggest difference? Is there one big difference between it and the older Mustang? Yeah, uh, that'd be everything. So <laughs> everything from the new independent suspension, which uh, for the first time in Mustang's history has gone to an independent suspension from a solid axle. And then the Shelby GT350 350R and, and of course our uh, R-C race car all have the independent suspension in addition to the 5.2 liter flat plane crank V8 which is just an awesome power plant. Ford Performance has just done an amazing job with the, the street car and that's translated into an awesome race car. Awesome race car now up to seventh. Jamie? We've talked a lot about the Camaros versus the Mustangs, but Andrew, you guys are fighting with the Porsche in the championship. They're ahead of you right now. What can Robin do? 
Well, you know, we've got a good car. Our Stevenson Camaro is running well. That second set of Continental tires I had on remained consistent, and uh, I was happy with that. Unfortunately, you know, the, the Porsche's got great power down the straightaway, and they're driving very well also. Their car seems to be handling uh, exceptionally well in, in addition to ours. The Mustangs are right behind us and are going to be uh, difficult to hold back in the straightaway, but we just have to keep pushing. Mistake-free. Robin's the guy to have in there, um, but we got to keep the pressure on that 13 and hope for a mistake from them, um, and we'll just see what happens. Thank you. Well, we go from here to the bull ring at Lime Rock in a couple of weeks and talking to Joe Vardy about the potential of the Porsches in, I really like our chances there. So if they can grab a few points back here today, they expect big things at Lime Rock. Suddenly that championship gets a little bit tighter and even though the Stevenson boys have been on a roll looking for their fourth consecutive victory here today, suddenly that, that leash gets a little bit tighter on the championship leader and suddenly the pressure changes, Justin, at the same time. And Brian called it so well at the top of the show that it is halfway and there's everyone is under ebb and flow certain cars are coming strong and uh, don't write anyone out right now the battle continues here at canadian tire motorsport park how about this action in st andrew carbonell up the inside of tyler cook for fourth in st battles aren't all up front Back at CTMP, there is a very used up Mustang that sat on pole for today's round five of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. Fortunately, driver Scott Maxwell is out of the car, seems to be okay after a vicious trip into the tire wall. Let's take a closer look. On board with Maxwell. See here the battle there. He's getting a run around the outside of James Vance in the 78 Mustang as they get towards the apex area for four. There's contact and huge impact with the tire wall and the Armco. You can see as he gets hit here, you, it's very hard to say who was where on the track, who was in the right or the wrong, but the fact is, is this was a very fast impact as he went in there on the right. We've talked about it all through every broadcast ever from this track. It's very catastrophic if you get it wrong, like this happened there. And again, this is steeply downhill, so the car really is not losing much speed as it skitters along the grass. There's Scotty, thank goodness he's walking away. And he said you have to be on maximum attack here at this racetrack. And we talked about it. They got shuffled back in the line with the pit stop that was a little bit slow. And there's the remnants of this essentially brand new car that debuted just a couple of weeks ago at Watkins Glen. Here's more with Brian. Larry Holt calls the shots here at Multimatic, and Larry, you were just watching the you know, replays of, of the incident that happened out there. Good to see Scott out of the car, obviously, but your take on it. Well, I mean, my take on it is he got, he got hit uh, in the left rear by the 78 car, but um, I guess race controls just decided that that wasn't, uh, there's no penalty for that. But we just lost a car. Scott's okay. I seen him walking around. Um, cars are right off. Um, you know, now we're going to have enough yellow to get the 158 to the end on no more stops. I guess there's, that's the silver lining. And obviously those cars brand new. How many of them exist? Is there another one in the shop? Well, one now it exists. <laughs> there was two. Now there's one. So no spares for Multimatic. They'll have to build up an entire other car. As you heard Larry say, that car is toast. Jamie? Well, John Maraki is the team owner for Racer's Edge. So he was on the radio with James Vance after that incident happened. Race control said no penalty here. What was the conversation like with James? Well, James said that uh, he was, uh, you know, there and they were side by side and he got crowded and there was contact, but it was strictly a racing incident. And he feels really bad that there was contact between them, but he feels very clean about what he did. And there was certainly no intent for contact. Now, James is new to the series. This is very tough racing. What do you say to a driver now to kind of help calm him down a little bit after something like that? Well, yeah, he was a little concerned about having caused an accident. He didn't feel that he did, but he was worried about how it would appear. So, yeah, we told him to just put that out of his head and just that there's uh, it was a racing incident and everything's fine. Just need to focus on the rest of the race and getting a good result. Thank you, John. Well, as Brian Till learned for us, with Lime Rock Park coming up two weeks from now, the season picks up speed. That is one car that will not see the checkered flag on 2015. We'll be back with more from Canada. Coming out of the forest on the Andretti Strait at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, 
Lights are out on the Chevrolet safety car, and we are ready to go green after our fourth full course caution. One more than this race saw last year. Cal Marcelli leads in Grand Sport. Spencer Papelli in a Porsche leads the ST category ninth in the overall running order. These guys are going to need some more help and cautions to make it to the checkered flag here tonight for the Mantella Autosport. Get ready. Green, 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 Leading green two cars as we get back to green. With Come less than 50 minutes remaining. Pardon yeah, me. Kyle will be certainly motivated to, uh, to keep his place at the front there. But as you can see there, you've got oh, the... Oh, look at Austin back using all of the escape road there on the exit of one, trying to get a run on Austin Sindrick there, but Austin was uh, having none of that. Yeah, well, Sindrick's got, you know, I'm sure that Larry's on the phone to him for saying, just, you know, be patient, get through. The strategy has changed now for this race. Go hard, go fast, but this is our remaining car, boy. There are two Camaros up front, but not the Camaros we're used to seeing there. It's normally this car, the number six, in the hands of Robin Liddell. Behind him, the nine, sister car from Stevenson Motorsports, is in the hands of Lawson Aschenbach. But Robin is so savvy. I mean, he knows the big picture. They came up just a little bit shy for the championship last year. They don't want to see the same thing happen this year. So they're on a roll, a second and three wins in the first four rounds of this championship. And the guys who are closest to them in the championship sit right in front of them. He can analyze this and just try and put together the big picture for the day as Austin Sindrick gets that run on the straightaway. The Camaro punches a big hole. Sindrick touching the brake there, making sure he's got pedal when he gets to the brake zone. Great he's move. Got him. Great move going through eight, into nine, and then into ten. He did a very nice overtaking there. If I was Matt Plummer, I'd see him coming, and I'd be wanting to push a little harder on Mark Wilkins in front, because I don't, oddly enough, the uh, the Mark Wilkins Marcelli cars are faster off on that restart, Calvin. It was funny, the Porsche's being, oh, look, here they come in the yep, pit. They're in. This is what you called. Yeah. So uh, they could have come when the other guys come. They actually had a faster stop because they were the last of the guys to make their first round of pit stops. So they could have actually leapfrogged around some of these guys. But now they're playing the opposite strategy card. They'll be good to go to the end of the, the race. Jamie? It looks like standard work down here. There will be no driver change. That's already been completed. Just four new Continental tires, and they're going to top both cars off with fuel, obviously, to get them to the end of the race. They came in with the 80 in front of the 8. The 8 is positioned in front of them on pit lane, so we'll see which crew gets the best, and it was the 8 that beat them off pit lane. Oops, the 25, Freedom Autosport Mazda. Nunez. Our what fifth full course caution. Contact on the left side of the car, it looks like. Entry to two. Yeah, as they go. So the these guys have stopped. So they're going to be stacked back up here again. They're good to go on fuel in terms of the Gulf Oil liveried number eight for Mantella. Mark Wilkins behind the wheel right now. So the big question mark for the guys up front, they were going to be a little bit shy on fuel, but these yellows are obviously giving you fuel save at the same time and eating up the clock. So. But Matt Plum certainly would not be unhappy to see that yellow right now, Calvin, because that has played into their strategy. Yep. Um, but I tell you what, Sindrick would have overtaken him that lap, I feel. He well, was Sindrick, looking very... Yeah, Sindrick's got good pace. He also had straightaway speed over the Camaro, but I don't think he'll have the same advantage over the Porsche. The Porsche's yep. been tr pretty strong down that back straightaway as well. But the well. Porsche did not look that good on the restart. So it'll be interesting to see if if the Mustang is faster off the restart when we get it, because he certainly was uh, last time round. The question now is the experience factor here. You've got young Austin Sindrick going up against Matt Plum, recognizes one of the leading hot shoes in this championship. And they both have that thing, that quality I told you about earlier, which is bravery. <laughs> so, so it's a perfect mix, just as described at the top of the show. Plenty of twists and turns in this race. And here's another one. Recall all the problems. The number 14 Nissan was having early in the race with a misfire. Word from timing and scoring is that BJ Zacharias in that car just set the fast lap of the race. So apparently the 14 is healthy and it's not all that far back in the running order. Another break coming up. We'll be back with more from Canada. Yeah, Lime Rock's a, a unique track and a unique race in itself. Uh, both the classes are, are split, so you only run against your class. Having the separate races promotes more green flag running. 
Uh, with multi-class racing, as you know, we very often see more contact and more incidents. It's a very different type of race when you don't have the, uh, the two classes out there together because you've got the ST cars that are doing their own battling and driving at their limits, but obviously we're a bit quicker than the GS cars and it, it plays a role. With 30 minutes less of racing, everything that happens on pit road and every mistake that you have on a track is to be exaggerated because you don't have that time to make it up. It's all about Lime Rock. Next stop on the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge, and it's a twofer. Separate races for Street Tuner and Grand Sport, both coming your way Sunday, August 2nd on Fox Sports 1. 7.30 a.m. Eastern for ST, noon Eastern for GS. Join us then. Here's a look at some of the highlights of the race thus far. Tremendous interplay between the two classes. A battle for the ST lead there. And one of the uh, numerous incidents we're seeing here today, Liam Dwyer just dives down the inside on the entry to turn two, turns the 38 around, and then Ashley Freiburg, the four-line team, are not having the best of seasons. Yeah, but the, you can see the run bum. Porsche did make it out. Beautiful pit stop there ahead of the Stevenson Camaros. And leading in ST was Chad Gilsinger. Then suddenly he had a bump, shut down his engine, no power. Everyone has to take avoiding action. Bomarito takes a little slip and slide there and takes a car with him on the entry to turn eight. And he was a feature again, though, as he bumps into the 23 BMW going through onto the back straight. Got a penalty for that one. Then a battle for the lead between the Multimatic boys. It's Billy Johnson taking that pole sitting car after a pit stop back to the front. And moments ago, this was Scott Maxwell in the number 15 he shares with Johnson. Contact with James Vance in another Mustang. Green, 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 green. Put that car off. Look at this. Ready. Austin Sindrick look to the inside and thinks better off as Matt Blum just keeps the hammer down on the entry to turn one. That's one of those corners where you're always using the brakes, but on a restart, you're not accelerating at the same rate of speed. So you can take in there a little bit deeper than you normally do. And I think that's what Matt did because Austin certainly had a run on him. Top five, Plum, Sindrick, Liddell, Ossenbach, and Zacharias in a Porsche, a Mustang, a pair of Camaros, and then the Nissan. And of course, Sindrick's opportunity to overtake will be determined by how hard Liddell pushes him from behind. Right now, very hard. And look at the various strategies playing out. Look at that. You see the Gulf oil livery, the first of the two Mantella Camaros. Those guys are topped up with fuel. They are definitely good to go to the end here, whereas all of the cars in front may still be some question marks there, but with this latest yellow, maybe they're in good shape. Now, we know the Mustang is so powerful down the straight, Calvin. Look at him as he positions himself. He actually gained two car lengths just coming onto the straight there. But getting by him, is he going to make him go the long way around through turn eight? Well, I think he has the torque through the middle part of the straight. And we get to the upper end here, the higher speed stuff, I think it's pretty even between the two. We saw him make a move around the outside of Rob Nadell in a similar area. He's not able to make that move on Matt Plum. Correct on that Nissan. I got Ooh. a close look at the number. It's not the 14. It's the number 41 of Stephen Doherty. Wow, look at this. That was really close there. Austin and Matt Plum having a great battle as Rob Nadell looks on. The championship leader sits there in the third spot. Oshin back his teammate right behind him. Now, after what you said earlier about the Stevenson Motorsports guys, specifically Robin Liddell, trying to play it cool here, seeing the big picture. If you're this close to getting that fourth straight win, maybe you're a little bit more tempted to get after it. Now let's get more on Scott Maxwell's accident with the man himself. Here's Brian. Talk about things heating up on the racetrack. It wasn't any hotter than the incident that we saw out there, Scott. First of all, you're okay? Yeah, it was a big hit, but I'm fine. Thanks. As far as the incident itself, what did you see from, from your point of view? I didn't see anything. I know he screwed up corner three and missed a shift halfway down, so I was pretty clear of him, and I gave him lots of room going into four. You can go side by side through there, and I just felt a big thud up my back, and that was the end of it. I spun around and onto the grass, and just a passenger. We talked to Larry Holt about the number of cars that exist. He said there were two, now there's only one. How long does it take the guys, as talented as they are, to turn a car around and build a new one? Will there be another car for you guys at Lime Rock? Well, I don't think uh, this car survived that one. I'd be shocked if it's if we can rebuild that car, so they're going to have to make a new car. So I, I'd be, you know, they do a great job at Multimatic and Ford Performance, but it's going to be hard work to be at Lime Rock for sure. Hard work to be at Lime Rock. Good to see that Scott is okay. Big hit. Well, that's why it's important to build it right, not build it quickly. You see the ebb and flow of this race. Yeah. Excuse me, Justin. Certainly over the lap, the Camaros are right in the game. But up that back straightaway, you could see the front two cars just pulling away from Nadell and Oshenbach in the Camaros. 
I mean, Cindric's got to be very careful he doesn't give him an unintentional nudge here. That would be very bad for them coming through turn eight, nine. You can see Matt is very fast through turn one. That's the balance of that Porsche. He does get caught up on a little bit as they head up to turn three. The, the Mustang looks very good there, but I think you're very right about the, the Camaros. They, they can only do as, the best they can right now and hope that there is a little incident ahead. Well, they've had some adjustment of performance over the last few rounds, and here we're looking at a restart here in ST. Great run there by Andrew Carbonell, and he slices to the inside of Pompelli there into Turn 1. Well, that was beautifully timed. Yeah, and the real key is you're allowed to start to initiate a pass at the drop of the green, so that can happen a little bit further back. You don't have to wait for the stripe like you do on the initial start. So Carbonell is the new ST class leader in that Mazda from Freedom Autosport. Remember, his teammate had to serve a drive-through penalty for that hit down in turn two with the 38 machine today. So great rebound for this team. And I think, I think it's about an hour 40 on the clock when they made that pit stop to put Andrew in. And with his uh, subsequent yellows, I think they're probably okay on fuel right now. Car does look pretty, uh, as you can see on the restart, it's pretty electric straight out on uh, after those restarts. And it's holding the pace right now, uh, you know, against Pompelli. But as you come into turn eight, it's funny. You, can, you set ebb and flow and you see it, don't you, Calvin? You see. You, you catch up, but it's really almost a bit of an illusion because you're going to lose it where your car is weaker or the driver in front is stronger. Some of it is handling between the different markets. Some of it is gear ratios too. Sometimes yeah. you'll be in a corner, you just don't have the right gear ratio. Stock gearbox, of course, so it's not like you can fine tune the uh, individual gear ratios like you can on a proper race car. So you're kind of stuck sometimes between gears and another car may have the right yeah. gear for that corner and you're sitting there waiting. Of course, it, it literally separated by the, the, the thickness of a piece of paper in this class. It doesn't take much to, to, to over. Also, you've got to be careful how you manage your tires. Look at this. We've had a change at the front. Sindrick has got around Matt Plum here. Multimatic after the big hit. The second car takes the lead of the race. 16-year-old Austin Sindrick now in command. Yeah, Mustang, tuck under. Let's tell you around. Did you really have to say 16, Bob? That's just like... <laughs> I was starting to like him right up until then. I'll tell you what, this has been a very impressive performance, whatever happens till the end of this race for Austin Sindrick. Really handled the pressure very nicely, made some great moves in traffic. Matt Plum, you heard the orders from Joe Vardy in the pits. Tuck up behind him, try to get a tow, and save fuel in the process. Coming up on 30 minutes remaining here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Welcome back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. We're now in the final 30 minutes of round five of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. Continental Tire is the official tire of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. Earlier, I talked about the two faces of CTMP. Right now, you're in the forest section. No fans on either side. The trees come right down to the edge of the track. At the end of this straightaway, the Andretti Street, you burst back into the spectator areas. Right now to Jamie Howe. We see the smile on Liam Dwyer's face. I just checked in with the team, and guys, they are good on fuel to the end of this race. So Liam, now that Andrew is out in front, what does he need to do to stay there? I think the biggest thing we actually need, in my opinion, is for it to stay green. The Mazda is really good in the corners. We lack the straight line speed that the Caymans and the Civics have. So when our caution when the field punches up, that's when, they, that's when they can overtake us coming to turn one. The Mazda really makes its time right through the corners here. So as long as it stays green and the engine's out front, hopefully that's where we'll finish. We weren't sure we'd see you guys at the front of the pack at this point in the race after a penalty early on with for contact. What happened? So battling with one of the Caymans from uh, Next Level European went down to turn two. I knew he had a little bit slower entry speed. I got down there and I don't think you saw me come in there because I was so far back and it turned in and we got into each other a little bit. I, I apologize for that. So we got served the penalty. Uh, kept my head up, follow me, got some clear track, ran some fast laps. So we got pretty lucky with the cautions to get the field bunched up. And uh, it really just played into the strategy that we had planned from the beginning. You know, the guys behind me came up with a great strategy. They built some fast cars for this race. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the 25 car, Tristan and Jonathan, I believe is out now with some sort of fire. Still trying to figure that out. But these guys did awesome work this week to get this car up front. It's definitely been a lot of teamwork. Brian? 
you know, when you win the first race of the year, you have high hopes. And Luis Rodriguez, I know you and your teammate Spencer Mapelli had that victory at Daytona. Not good luck since then. How does it feel to be back up towards the front here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park? It feels great to be up front here. And and so like it feels great to have the team also. It's a 1-2 RS1 up there right now. So it'd be amazing to finish like that. But the race still has half an hour to go. Still has half an hour to go. But the Porsche versus the Mazda, how is that matchup? You had a chance to run out there. Were you ever around one of the Mazdas to see where you have an advantage and where they have an advantage? I was around one of the Mazdas, you know, like it's hard to keep up with them, but still like it's good competition and it's good racing here in the Continental Series. And I love these Continental tires. And there's plenty left in this race. And Spencer Pompelli has the hammer down, guys. This is a great fight between two real pros in a pair of cars that have both won races already this year, the season opener for the Porsche in second place and Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca for the Mazda leading ST. Yeah, they're pretty evenly matched. I mean, we talked about the ebb and flow, Justin, but um, that Cayman, I mean, we talked about the MX-5, I was a good handling car, but that Cayman's pretty pretty tasty as well. Have you driven one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, they really are car. on the road, yeah. uh, one of the most outstanding yeah. balanced cars. I, you know, I just was sitting back watching this thinking, no wonder fans, our fans watching it, and the people sitting up on the banks, grass banks here, love this this series because all of us believe we could be having a go at this in yep. one of the cars we drive on the road. And I think that's the motivation behind this series. But we're seeing professional drivers, drivers that have really aspired to be in professional racing out there in cars that really are very similar to the ones we get to drive on the road. Yeah, Spencer's really close to him here. Got a pretty good run out of Moss Corner there, out of turn five up the Andretti straightaway. You've got to have more than a sniff to go by into turn eight, haven't yeah. you? I mean, and it's very easy to defend your line. Ooh, very he close. Comes, here he come. comes. This, oh, oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. That's <laughs> brave. They're going to touch going through there nearly. Oh, fantastic. Through the S's. Here comes the left-hander. Yeah. Great racing and between these two drivers <laughs> side by side through nine and into ten. I'm on the inside. No, you are. No, I am. That was fantastic drive. That is, you just said it. These are two pros doing what they do best. You saw Andrew try to position the car down the straightaway yeah. to force Spencer the long way around. Now Spencer tucks it to the inside. He got a good run, but Andrew's coming back at him using all of the road and a bit more. He'll have the inside line for two. Just brings you right out of your chair watching this. What is the record for the number of corners gone by, gone round? Side by side, that is great That's stuff. That's a good question. And you, you need total commitment here, but you need total confidence oh, in your opponent oh, oh. as Spencer now tucks it back to the inside of three. That's Gee, a key point, good. Calvin. You need to have confidence in the other guy and where he's going to try to put his car. So we have seen already today, like in this uh, corner with Scott Maxwell, a touch here oh. is going to oh, send no, you. No. Calvin, that was almost a replay of what yeah. we saw. I think Spencer gave him a little uh, hand gesture out of the window there. You don't want to be doing that in that corner. You've got to respect oh. the danger element of this racetrack. It exists, and at the speeds, if you touch someone there, that was just great car control by Spencer keeping it together. Yeah, but he, you know, Spencer, we see he's a smiley bloke, but he also has a steely side that we've seen when he gets a bit uh, mm. aggravated as he gets out of the car, and he will be upset about that because that wasn't entirely necessary. But I tell you what, they put on a show for us that lap, didn't they? And I think it's not over yet. Well, as you heard from Liam Dwyer earlier driving that car, sometimes it's easier to make a mistake like that than you might think. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Spencer attacked turn eight like I've not seen him before. I think what he's trying to do is put a little buffer there between he yeah. and Andrew Carbonell, but Carbonell comes back at him. That Mazda's really quick through that 9-10, sort of switchback area, transitions really well, short wheelbase car, good platform changes direction really well and he's got a run on Spencer now look for turn three probably the next opportunity to maybe see another pass yeah we saw a dive bomb under the brakes by Spencer into turn three we may see the same from Matt I mean from from Carbonelli and now Carbonell drops back a couple of car lengths both these guys driving ten tenths right now looks like the MX-5 is sliding around maybe just a little bit more than the Cayman Play some of the best action. Belly dives down the inside. There's some of that sliding I was talking about from Carbonell, but with 23 and a half minutes roughly to go in this race, you're not trying to save the tires. Watch this though, Justin, when they accelerate down, we switch back on board with Carbonell. Okay, so he has the drag races being won right now by Spencer as they head down the straight, but look at the Mazda pull back. 
much here. A little touch. Watch the control there by Spencer. That is arms and elbows, ladies and gentlemen, inside that Porsche right there. You can see his hands oh, moving through the window. It? Look at it right there. Yeah. Oh. Awesome job. And you see the, <laughs> the finger wave. You're number one. I tell you what, I reckon Carbon, Carbonell almost got a little sideways himself going around there, so it looked like he almost slid up into I, him. I think he is really so. having to work to keep that thing under control right on the ragged edge. Great action in ST. There goes Carbonell sideways again. We'll take a break. You're not going to want to miss the closing minutes of this Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge event. Welcome back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, where the battle in the Grand Sport and Street Tuner classes here in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge has basically become a battle between two pairs of cars. This is the ST fight that's been going on lap after lap between Spencer Pompelli in a Porsche and Andrew Carbonell in the Mazda MX-5. Up front, Austin Sindrick in that Mustang GT350 RC trying to hold off the Porsche 911 of Matt Plum. They too have gapped the field by just a little bit. And there's only half a second between Sindrick and Plum right now for the overall lead of this race, but this battle for the ST lead will not go away, Justin. I think you just saw that Carbonell had to just be a little more patient for one lap, but he's not now because he had to bring the tires back. I think he literally saw him sliding a lot in that Mazda, and right now I think that he's got the, the rubber underneath him again as he goes down the outside, which it'll be as you head down into turn five. Can he cut back underneath him, the over-under here? No, I think Spencer's uh, up for the task there. He carries a lot of speed through the middle of the corner. This is where the contact took place earlier. When you're racing someone this hard, Calvin, it's that absolutely analysis of the guy in front at every single opportunity, isn't it? Anthony Mantella's cars, the Camaros, are running fifth and sixth in class. Let's hear from the team owner with Jamie. And they had a great running earlier, Bob, running one and two. But, Anthony, we, we talked about the rebuild of this number eight machine overnight. Your shop's 40 minutes away. What can you say about the team getting this car back on the racetrack? Best team in the paddock, there's no doubt about it. Um, it was a two plus G hit uh, right into the tire wall. Uh, put the car on its side, and the car is absolutely perfect today. Uh, runs perfectly. Mark's going to go to the lead right now. We've, uh, we've got good tires on the car, and uh, the guys in front of us don't have very good tires. As a driver and as a team owner, when there's an incident like that that happens, what's the mindset when you have to get back behind the wheel of a car? Do a better job. Um, just get back up on the horse, you know. Um, it's just training. It's mind. Th you know, it's all. It's a mental game, and uh, not being afraid of it. I made a mistake. My foot slipped off the brake pedal, and um, it won't happen again. You have a lot of support here today as well. It's home hometown crowd. We'll see what happens. Thank you. A lot of confidence there, and he brought up a very important point. There's 16 laps less wear on the two mantella cars and the other camaros right in front of them i'm not sure they can catch Cindric, but they may have something for the stevenson guys as the st battle justin yeah. heats up again look they are drag racing down that back straight that is fantastic we've seen this as a very critical corner as you go sweeping through the left up into turn seven eight there. i mean that's just amazing this is, I mean, I tell you what, these two are right, these two are racing. They're defining ST racing right now. Well, I tell you what, I know there's 19 minutes to go, all but, but uh, this one could go right down to the final corner because I don't think either one is going to give up on this win today. Yeah, you know, it's even money if it's the final corner. Yep. It came and pulled the Mazda a little bit down the straightaway, even though the Mazda's in the draft right there. As we see Sindrick on the right side of the screen, you see the gap there. It's now up to nearly a second on Matt Plum. So Sindrick just tenth by tenth is eking out a margin on Plum as he's looking for a win here to try and close down that points gap to Rob Nadell. Nadell sits in the third spot, so it would only be a two-point jump for Matt Plum to the lead. But if he could get the lead, it would be a five-point swing, which is massive at this stage of the game. So you said the Porsche that came and pulling away a little bit down the back straight, but the Mazda pulls it back a little bit under braking through turn 8, 9, 10. Right now, though, it's interesting. It's just where you get on the power. And as you watch turn one, and especially the spectators out there are able to see it firsthand, you can hear when they get on the gas. And I think the Mazda can get on gas just one hundredth of a second earlier than the Porsche, which allows him to get a bit behind him as they head up into turn three. But great rolling speed. It is very much momentum, the momentum uh, category, isn't it? We heard. Tristan Nunes talking about it earlier. 
it's momentum, it's balance, and uh, well, I tell you what, Street Tuna is just spreading out a little bit, but not in Grand Sport. Yeah, I tell you what, Wilkins is starting to put the pressure on Archenbach, and I think Archenbach may actually have a bit more pace than his teammate Rob Nadell, but of course Rob Nadell has the championship lead. So we saw in the early rounds of this championship at Daytona, at Sebring, where Archibald seemed to maybe have more pace, but he had poor track position and they weren't gonna just wave him by. So uh, it's been in a tough spot this year when you got two first-class cars running nose to tail. There are the front two, Cindric and Plum, and then this gap, it's been about four or five seconds to four consecutive Camaro Z28Rs. Liddell, Ossenbach, Wilkins, and Marcelli. If I was Matt Plum, I'd be doing exactly what he is right now, as easy as an armchair driver right now. But I think that what he's doing is he knows if he tried to push Cindric too hard and he went by, they'd be in a head-to-head -head fight all the way to the finish. Calvin, I reckon he's very easily able to hold that distance behind him. Yep. And he's going to be pushing hard in the last five minutes, six minutes of this race. That You only need to lead the last lap. That's right. And uh, we talked about it, the experience factor with Matt Plum. He'll be thinking that through. Jules Vardy will be directing a little bit over the radio to him as well. So, and uh, battling ST is all the way four through Camaros, the field. Now. You're looking four Porsche Caymans all in a row. Eric Voss in the 56 car off to the left. This is for ninth through 12th in class right there. Right. Ethan Lowe, Greg Lafouge, Eric Foss, and Dylan Murcott. Yeah, we've got battles going on everywhere. Oh, what an awesome racetrack. And when you've got a good handling car like a lot of these drivers seem to have here today, it's just great fun. And when you add to that a battle like we're seeing up front, I mean, I think both these drivers, you talk about Spence may be in a little bit perturbed about the bump he got down in turn four, but I think both these guys will have thoroughly enjoyed this race here today. Yeah, I think the, it, we saw those that five, six, seven lap battle, I think has taken a little toll on both cars. Uh, you know, their tires will certainly have, have be feeling the effects of that right now, Calvin, but look as we, we're having a little replay now of quite what happened to them. A little Spencer bit oh. on the brakes in Moss Corner. Actually, sometimes if you get a nudge there in the right spot, it can actually help your acceleration yeah. off that corner because he didn't really get too sideways and got a nice little acceleration punch off of Moss. We well, heard Carbonell just winding that Mazda out before shifting to top gear on the Andretti straight. Under 15 minutes to go here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. We'll take this break and return to the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge from Ontario. Back at Continental Tire, Sports Car Challenge Round 5 from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park with Calvin Fish, Justin Bell, Jamie Howe, and Brian Till. I'm Bob Varsha. Here's the battle for the lead in the ST class. Lap after lap, Spencer Pompelli and Andrew Carbonell have been changing positions. Sort of car off to the side of the Mario Andretti straightaway there as the second of the Nissans, the 41 car, I believe, is. Uh, come to a stop. Just a local caution right now, but it could certainly kind of uh, scupper anyone's opportunity to make a pass down this straightaway. Stephen Doherty is driving it. If he tries to get through the S's to the pit entrance, the yellows are now down, so he must be in a safe zone. You yeah. see a little break in the uh, yeah, Armco Barry there in the background, so they may deem that's in a safe spot and everyone can just keep the racing going. Look at this battle heating up. The four Camaros all together. Talk about Canadian team as two Canadian drivers. We heard from Kyle Marcelli today. Obviously, Mark Wilkins resides here in Toronto, and uh, he's had a lot of success here over the years, knows the racetrack like the back of his hand, so he's starting to put the pressure on Lawson Oshin back for the full spot right now. Well, he heard his car owner, Anthony Mantella, say that Mark was going to drive it to the front, so Mantella must obviously think that Wilkins has a good car under him for that fight. Oh, oh look at that. We'll talk about sliding Mazdas. He'll regret that, but yeah. I was just about to say, his car just became the more dominant of that pairing. I believe he had a quiet couple of laps, let everything, let his tires get going, and he was starting to ramp up there, Calvin, to take, make a pass for the lead, because he looked stronger on that lap. He looked comfortably stronger in second place. And Spencer will take a look in his mirror there, see the gap. Now he's just got to hit his marks and keep lapping at the same pace. It'll be hard for Andrew to do the catch up. He just tries to carry a bit too much speed into the entry to try and get a run off. And the grip just wasn't there in the back end of the car. Let's get more on the battle up front in GS. Jamie. 
Well, Hugh Plum has been watching on his brother Matt behind the wheel. I know you don't listen in on the radio, but you were out on the same racetrack earlier with the Mustangs. What does he have for them? You know, this new Mustang is, is, quite, a, uh, is quite a race car. Um, you know, I was, I was out behind the two at my, uh, during my stint, and I really didn't have a whole lot for them. Um, obviously a great car, but, you know, the Porsche will be there at the end. Um, you know, we've got 10 minutes or so to go here and just doing what we can. Hopefully they'll, uh, you know, burn their tires off and we'll have something for them. All right, we'll see what happens. Brian's down with the Mustang camp. It's kind of crazy to think that Jade Buford at 27 years old is the old guy in the 158, but he is. But let's talk about that experience that you have. You know how to go fast in these cars. You know how to run up front in Continental Tire. Right now, what's going through Austin's mind, and what does he have to focus on? Because he's got a lot of experience right behind him. Yeah, what he basically just needs to focus on is just turning laps right now. He's doing a great job. Can't be happier with what he's done so far. Hopefully that continues to go on. And hopefully we finish on the top step today. So I'm pretty excited. Can't be more proud of the kid. Uh, Billy and I have been working very hard to bring him up and pass our knowledge along to him. And can't be happier with our Ford performance Mustang GT350, it's performing great. Hopefully he can turn a few more laps and we will finish on the top set today. They're keeping their fingers crossed we'll end this interview so Jade can get back and watch the action on the screen. What's scary at 27 is he's almost old enough to be Jade's dad. <laughs> almost. You must travel in a different crowd than I do. It's the European thing. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, I would guess. Well, you heard Jay Buford say, keep turning laps. There aren't that many laps to go, frankly. We are under 10 minutes remaining. 90 seconds per lap, roughly. Do the math. One more break, and then we'll take you to the checkered flag here in round five of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. Stand by for more. Everybody else is watching here at CTFB. You do too. Back at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, less than eight minutes remaining now in round five of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge from Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. There are the four Camaros running nose to tail. They are now about seven and a half seconds behind the battle for the lead in the GS class. You should check out our Continental Tire race recap to the left of your screen. Austin Sindrick, the 16-year-old from North Carolina, doing a great job in that Mustang GT350 RC trying to hold off Matt Plum in a Porsche 911. Street Tuner, Spencer Pompelli and Andrew Carbonell in a Porsche and a Mazda respectively have simply been battling nose to tail for the last 10 to 15 laps. I tell you what, Calvin, Austin just did a fantastic job of getting through the traffic there into turns six, seven, because had he not gone by and he banged the curb to get through, he would have had Matt Plum alongside him going down the back straight. That was fantastic driving. Yeah, it was really good stuff and uh, just very cool under the pressure. He's trying to get his first win here with uh, just under seven minutes to go and that just ramps up the intensity of making the right calls, making the right moves, but so far it's been a faultless race for young Austin Sindrick. I have to say, if you're a Ford driving any kind of Ford right now, you want to put on a good showing because they've got some exciting stuff lined up for the future. A hot young shoe, a dad like his connections, maybe the wrong team owner in the in the big scheme of mo world motorsport, but with contacts like that, who knows? We may see him in something very sporty next year. That's great. That news. was me just throwing that out there, by the way. That was based on nothing. But did you write that down, or did you just make? I that just up made that up, but I reckon. Yeah. I reckon it's worth working for. Yeah, you saw the well that new Ford GT wrong. coming online in the World Endurance Championship and the Tudor United Sports Car Championship on these shores. Exciting stuff is coming indeed for Ford. Well, this is a pretty picture for Camaro. Four cars run on line astern. The problem is there's two cars ahead of them, but there's been a lot of adjustment of performance with this Camaro, uh, certainly through the last year, which was its debut season with the new Z28 platform. And then this year they've had some uh, engine changes in terms of the performance there. And they also added some ride height to the car, which is something that the teams have really had to try and get their arms around. They're saying they can't really get enough camber in at the tires because of everything and the suspension is kind of elevated up and you can't get the right suspension set up. So certainly some compromises there that the Stevenson group and the Mantello group are working through. I think it was Andrew Davis who said earlier today, at least we'll still be in the points lead. 
look at this. It looks like Wilkins in that Gulf Oil car does have a little bit more grip. He's kind of able to tuck the car a little bit more than uh, Oshenbach in front of him. But so far, he's kept it clean there as it gets really tight here. Coming on this front straightaway, threading the needle there. Wilkins on the attack. Looking to the outside. This is great stuff here. But Lawson Oshenbach, these guys have run head to head in a number of series here over the last few years. They know each other's game very, very well. It's a wonderful demonstration. We talked about it the whole way through that drivers that respect and, and, and know each other and trust can do this kind of a thing. But I tell you what, it just shows that uh, in every form of racing, you're racing the guy in front and behind, aren't you, Calvin? It doesn't matter where you are, these guys will push. It's not for a win, but it's definitely for a podium. They'll put it all on the line, but I think in Lawson and Mark, you got two of the cleanest drivers in the championship. So. I think Mark wants that way by. I think it's a little bit easy to push or to put the pressure on this Camaro. I think when he gets up around Robin Nadell, he'll be thinking GM, yeah. championship lead. Don't take too many chances and turn the championship yeah. leader around. See, Liddell has freed himself from the pressure a little bit. And that just makes making those choices and decisions around the traffic a little bit easier when you don't have someone right in your rear view mirror like Oshenbach has there with, with Wilkins. I love this area of the race. I mean, the whole racetrack is cool, but I love this section here. There's great rhythm to it. There's just enough room to transition back across and set up for the final turn, turn 10 on the front straightaway. And what is it, Kevin? Probably three laps at most right now till the end. And Austin Sindrick there as we watch him heading over the brow there in turn two. Right now, uh, I, from my point of view, he, he's pretty much secure in this as long as he doesn't make a mistake. I think he's past the big bulk of the traffic. And you know, sometimes there are races in your any career that you inherit. Some are circumstantial. Some your teammate did a better job than you. Um, and obviously his teammate here did a wonderful job. But Austin absolutely has controlled the last half of this race. and. If they do win in a couple of laps time, he can say that, as far as I know, yeah. that was my first real oh, ball whoa. there for Plum. Big moment there as he continues to push and chase Everybody down the lead. you got a big, big lead on the other place and there's only two minutes to go, okay? So hold on to it, okay? The yeah. body saw that, he said, don't throw it away. You're yeah. looking to gain some points in the championship here today. Don't push it if a win's not on the table. Yeah, he's about seven seconds clear of Robin Liddell in third place, so. yeah. Mantella cars very close together. You see Wilkins has dropped back from the Stevenson duo, and now he's got Kyle Marcelli over all, all over his rear bumper right now. They might even say Derriere up here, wouldn't they? <laughs> back to the ST battle. Once again, oh, it's closed this... up. Carbonell is back on Pompelli. It really has closed up. We said this That's might go down to the final corner, and uh, yeah. looked like Pompelli had enough of a lead to maybe control it to the finish, but maybe some traffic was involved. But either way, Carbonell is right back on his derriere. Yeah, I think Carbonell was just holding pace to save his tires to see what he had for the end. Pompelli's car looks a little edgy there on the exit of turn yeah. two, so he may have uh, got his. Uh, pounds worth out of those today well, right now on the radio the drivers will have been informed that the white flag will fly the next time they go by and that is going to play into your absolute action strategy right now and if i was carbonell i'd be like i have to go by him this lap into turn eight that's what i'd be thinking the other thing can factor in with the st class bob is the fact if these gs cars can catch them that may take a lap off the board for the st cars because right. the checkered flag will fly for the gs cars so that may actually reduce uh, the ST cars doing that extra lap. Carbonelli is not close enough as he came out of turn seven up the back straight there. That's a pity for him because I think he needed this this shot going in uh, to, to make the move. Well, barring a last lap catastrophe, it appears that Austin Sindrick will come through to become the youngest winner in series history at age 16. Doesn't turn 17 until September 2nd. And this is a performance, as you pointed out, Justin, that he will remember for a long time. Well, he went and got it. I mean, there's no yep. doubt about it. Like yep. you said, it flag, wasn't handed to him. Flag. Bring it home. It's going to be a huge win for Ford, for Multimatic, and for this young man and his teammate. What a great day if he can just bring it home for this final lap. But here, here we look at it. Here's the fight. It's going to be the final lap for these guys, too. Does he have it in him? He's going to go for it. Carbonell, Carbonell puts it all on the line all of the time. I think he's going to go for the win. Yeah. 
Well, this is going to be the key, though. The, uh, I thought that uh, Sindrick had gotten around the ST lead battle. He hasn't. So these guys may have a lap and a half to go unless Sindrick can catch them before they get back to this front straight away. It's going to be close. Look in the background. There's the yep. overall leader. Can he pass these guys before these guys have to do one more additional lap on top of completing this one? Nice well, runner. Yeah, he might get there. He yeah. is closing quickly. Yeah. I think, the, I think they may beat him back to the stripes. There could be another lap in this ST battle yet. I hope so for our sake, because yeah. this, is, this is good stuff. I think for sure. I'm sure Pompelli doesn't feel that. He's like, come on, overtake yeah. me. <laughs> Please. No, they're safe. They're sound. There's Sindrick. That's going to be another lap for these guys. Yep. Finish this one plus one more as Sindrick is now completing the final couple of corners here for that win. There is your overall leader, Austin Sindrick, off the final corner. Jay Buford started the car. Austin Sindrick comes home as the youngest winner in Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge history. Thank you. There's Jay Buford. Somewhere, Papa Tim Sindrick is busy with his duties as president of Penske Racing. In Milwaukee this weekend for a big race there tomorrow night. But look at this bell. This oh, is it. Carbonell sideways okay. through two. He is pushing. He's going to try and win the drag race. If he can get alongside him as they come out on that oh, very critical and dangerous little back straight there. I don't know. He's Good got corner from Pampelli there. He got through three yeah. really cleanly yep. and effectively. Gapped him a little bit. Yeah, he's done a nice job there. Here comes the slow Moss corner complex, 5A and B. Carbonell is quick through this second part, as long as he doesn't push it too hard like he did a couple of laps uh -oh. ago. Missed the apex a little there, a little wider as he went through that right hander, trying to carry as much speed as he could. You know that Cayman's got good straightaway speed, even in the draft. The Mazda didn't seem to have much for him earlier in this race, but Carbonell's going to push it all the way to the line here. Right now he's sitting as low in that seat as he can, Calvin, <laughs> and his right foot, he's, he's about to push the pedal through the floor. Turn his Flintstone impression. One of these teams or the other will become a first time, uh, two time winner in 2015. Doesn't look like Carbonell is close enough, but Pompelli's got to get the job done through these final two corners. Nicely done as oh. Spencer. Whoa, and oh, Carbonell fighting Carbonell. to the last. Can't reach him. Spencer Pompelli and Luis Rodriguez Jr. bring it home for RS1. Wow. What a race. Broken up by caution flags early, but worth every minute at the end. Welcome back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. What a moment for that young man, Austin Sindrick, who along with his partner, Jade Buford, have each picked up their first wins in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. And officially, Austin is the youngest winner ever at 16 years of age. Here's a look at the unofficial results in Grand Sport. Dare I say it, Austin powers to victory. What a great day for both those young men claiming their first victory. Plum very close behind. And ST was a great one, Justin. Oh, magnificent. And Spencer Pampelli really deserved that win and worked for it. Well, let's get down to Brian Till with our GS winners. And what a grin on Austin Sindrick's face. Spectacular job. The last five, ten minutes. How was it in the car knowing you had so much pressure from Matt behind you? Yeah, I was, I was to be honest, it was probably the most physical race I've done so far. I've been in the car for about an hour and 20 minutes, burning my butt off, and at a high-speed track like this, it's a, it's a chore. But to have these, get these guys in victory lane, and this is the second race of the GT350 RC, it's, it's awesome. And an awesome job. Congratulations on the win. Jamie? Well, in SC, Spencer Pompelli did not have radio communication for his entire stint. Spencer, how important was this win to the team after a string of bad finishes? You know, this Rensport 1 team does such a good job, and we started Daytona off so strong, but just a string of bad luck that was really out of anyone's control kind of took us out of the uh, the front of the field and out of the championship hunt. So to rebound here with a great car, great team, it was really big. You know, this uh, hats off to Andrew Carbonell. He raced me really hard, really clean. Uh, his car was a little quicker, but we were faster in the spots here that it mattered. And uh, I just want to you know say he did a great job, and I a lot of respect for him. I uh, hope that was fun to watch, but, man, these Continental tires are so good. You can just drive them hard, hard after lap after lap. And, you know, at the end, we were still racing as hard as we could. That was fun. We saw a little bit of a bump there. What happened? 
I try to give everyone a car within an inch. I don't care if it's the last lap or, you know, middle of the race for the leader for last. But uh, I may have given them less than an inch, but I thought I left them enough room, made it slid into me. I don't know, but it wasn't egregious enough to where we were uh, sliding anywhere. And uh, it's good hard racing. And, and my hat's off to Lewis, hat's off to RS1. And this is just a great win. Congratulations to the whole team. Second win of the season. Brian? Liam Dwyer standing here talking to Andrew Carbonell. Spencer Papelli was just talking about respect, the respect that you guys showed out there. Those closing laps, did you have anything in your back pocket? Did you have a plan, or was it just going to be if it presents itself? You know, it was one of those situations, if it presents itself. This Freedom Autosport Mazda MX-5 was phenomenal all weekend. The team did such a hard job to get it right. Spencer didn't step a foot wrong. I was hoping he would, and I was going to be there to pounce on it, but he didn't. And like you said, I mean, it was a bunch of respect between the two of us. You know, the respect I already had from him has grown, and, and I, I would love to do that again. Congratulations. Great run. Another great Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge race from here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, guys. That's right. Congratulations to our first two-time winners in the ST class this year. Here's a look at the championship. Liddell and Davis finished third on the track, but are still 17 points up. Yeah, they were going for four straight here. Couldn't quite make it happen, but a good points day for them, even though their points lead is reduced by a couple of points with the Plump Brothers, brothers uh, finishing in that runner-up spot. So look at the street tuner category. Carbonell and Dwyer leading by just 11 over fellow Mazda drivers McAleer and McCombie. Yeah, they increased their lead a little bit. Another great day for Carbonell and Dwyer. Looking for that second victory. Couldn't quite get it, but... They just keep scoring points, Bob, and that's what it takes in this championship run. Don't forget, our next round will be from Lime Rock Park in the Berkshire Hills of Northwestern Connecticut. Two separate races, GS and ST, both coming your way on Sunday, August 2nd. 7.30 a.m. Eastern time for the ST race, noon Eastern for GS. The final thought, Cal? Well, we go from one great track to another great bull ring. I mean, Lime Rock is very different. It is high speed, but uh, it's non-stop action. There's a short lap strategy is always a tough play there. How about you, Justin? It defines life, doesn't it? There's no reward without risk, and here you get both at this amazing track. Can't wait for the next race. Brilliant. We're off to Lime Rock Park. Thank you for joining us for Calvin Fish, Justin Bell, Jamie Howe, and Brian Till. I'm Bob Varsha. A great weekend here in Ontario. We'll see you from Lime Rock Park in a couple of weeks. Until then, so long, everyone.